Hello everyone and welcome to No Place for Hate, a live conversation on hate crimes, hate incidents, and how the city of Los Angeles is responding. My name is Capri Maddox and I'm the Executive Director of the Los Angeles Civil, Human Rights, and Equity Department. And I am honored to welcome you to today's program. We have gathered city and community leaders from across Los Angeles to provide you with information on how to report a hate crime or hate incident, resources available for victims and communities, and how we can make sure that hate has no home in Los Angeles. Hate crimes and hate incidents are continuing to, to rise across the nation, even here in Los Angeles. Recent data from the Los Angeles Police Department shows that in 2020 alone, hate crimes against the transgender community increased by 26%. Hate crimes against the Hispanic community increased by 36%. And hate crimes against Asian Pacific Islanders increased by 114%. And this data only reflects hate crimes, not the hate incidents, which could, which could push this number even higher. We are seeing record violence and discrimination against Asian Pacific Islanders, primarily due to false narratives, narratives and bigoted lies surrounding COVID-19. When even one community in Los Angeles is made to feel othered or unsafe, we are all put at risk. And we must all rise to support our fellow Angelinos from discrimination, bigotry, and hate. Today with me is Mayor Eric Garcetti, City Attorney Mike Fuhr, City Council Member Nithya Rahman, Assistant LAPD Chief Beatrice Gramala, and Manju Kakarne from Stop AAPI Hate. This conversation will share the tools available to victims of hate, how to report a hate crime or incident, and what communities and allies need to know. We hope this will give you the tools to come forward, report hate in our community, and make Los Angeles safe for all. Let's get started with Mayor Eric Garcetti. Mayor Garcetti, thank you for joining this conversation today. Thank you, Capri, and I'm really looking forward to this conversation with fellow leaders um, and from folks from the community. Uh, not only the tragic incident that we saw in Atlanta, but what we see here in Koreatown recently, what we've felt not just this year, but really the legacy of decades, even centuries uh, of hate that we've seen. It is our responsibility to not just speak out against it, which I'm looking forward to today, but to talk about the concrete actions each one of us, from leaders to everyday residents can take to make sure that these incidents um, are reduced year over year, not increased as we've seen. Thank you, Mayor Garcetti. Mr. Mayor, we're seeing hate crimes reach historic highs here and across, Los uh, and across our country. How is the city of Los Angeles responding to a rising tide of hate? Well, we see, unfortunately, in moments of stress, um, political leaders, um, organizations, uh, racist groups prey on the tough economic conditions that we face. Uh, lead, as we've seen at the highest levels of our elected officials in the land, narratives, as you've said, that uh, point fingers and blame people. I remember at the beginning of this pandemic, the anti-Asian uh, sentiments that we heard on the streets of Chinatown and others, even before we knew what the impact of this pandemic would be, blaming people of East Asian heritage for somehow bringing this uh, virus to us. Um, and remember, I'm footsteps away from the largest mass lynching in U.S. history something which tragically hit so many African-Americans in the South of the United States and the central part of the United States. But people forget in the late 19th century that it was here, residents of Chinese descent uh, had the largest, were victims of the largest mass lynching in American history, literally two blocks from where City Hall is today. Uh, it was here where we had Japanese Americans who were taken from their homes, property seized, and put in internment camps like Manzanar uh, up in Owens Valley. So I think we always want to contextualize what's happening. But this year specifically, we see a narrative partially because of that blame of a false narrative in the pandemic, and also because uh, folks will always point out whether it was a president who ran for office saying that Mexicans were rapists and murderers, and maybe there was a, good, a few good ones, um, or who ramp up global um, blame 
that reflects on people of different heritage here in Los Angeles. We've seen a 55% increase since 2016 of hate crimes overall. And you know, this, this week, the Stop AAPI uh, hate organization released a report with data across the United States. It said that there was 3,800 recorded anti-Asian incidents in this past year. And I want to thank Manju, who's part of this, who helped stop, start Stop AAPI Hate last year. But the city of LA is responding. And let me be very concrete. One, we've assigned hate crime investigators to all 21 of our police divisions. And LAPD has been a model uh, nationally for a number of decades on taking hate crime seriously as something that's not just about the crime committed, but also the hate that is a part of that and ensuring that the laws that we have for enhanced sentencing um, comes to bear. Second, we're working to improve tracking and reporting, encouraging people to report both what would be hate crimes and hate incidents. Because the more that we know, the better we can track it, see where it's coming from and do something about it. We're also developing resources in my administration together with the city council, our city attorney, to put together a task force uh, on specifically AAPI uh, hate incidents and hate crime. And I know the city council is moving forward on legislation that I'm looking forward to uh, council member Roman talking about uh, to improve city reporting response and support. And then you, in many ways, Capri are the incarnation of one of the boldest steps Los Angeles has taken. In years past, we'd be saying who's responsible for taking this on. A new civil and human rights and equity department is tasked with exactly this. Our human relations commission, which reports there, a place where people can bring for material compensation their claims of, of racism when it happens in a workplace or in the community. Um, and that's why we collectively with the city council established this department for the first time in our history. And data from Stop AAPI Hate shows that many hate uh, incidents against Asian Americans are civil rights violations. That's including workplace harassment. It's not just what happens on the street or the tragedies that we see in places like Atlanta. It's the day-to-day -day incidents that can happen in denials of service to people. The kind of things that our civil rights department is set up to address. And finally, we have the authority now to investigate, to level penalties in discrimination in private commerce, in education, in employment, and in housing. So when we say hate has no place in Los Angeles, we mean that in two ways. Literally, there is no place for hate in Los Angeles, but there is no part of Los Angeles, whether it's our professional, our personal, our recreational, or our residential spheres, that we will accept hate and there will be punishment for those who bring it. What should the API community and allies know, Mr. Mayor? Well, first of all, if you've experienced hate, report it. That is the most important thing. Go to, LA, go, go to LAPD, go to Stop AAPI Hate, go to the county at 211 or another community organization, but make sure you report it. Second, we need continued attention on this. And that means that this doesn't just rest with government. It starts with all of us. Have these conversations in our workplace with our bosses, if you're a boss, bring that leadership. Don't tolerate hateful language, exclusion, or actions anywhere in our city. And if you want to report to LAPD where we can go for criminal penalties together with our city attorney and even district attorney as well, go to lapdonline.org. Um, all LAPD officers have the training to take in hate crime and hate incident, hate incident reports. And this is really critical that we quantify this. You can also call the LAPD tip line at 877 529-3835. And of course, if there's an incident that's happened or happening, call 911 if it's a hate crime that rises to that level. Uh, the county also has options as well. And we have that on our civil and human rights website at civilandhumanrights.lacity.org slash stop hate. Uh, something that I hope that folks will check out. Even if you don't know of something now, familiarize yourself, share that with friends. And to learn more about things you can do, one of the organizations we also would encourage you to be in contact with for API community uh, is Asian Americans Advancing Justice, which has a long record, not just in Los Angeles, but across the country. And it's teamed up recently with Hollenbeck Division uh, to provide a free bystander intervention and de-escalation training for those that are willing and interested so that we can be active participants in the de-escalation and the unhating uh, in our city. Um, but first and foremost, report it, let people know. Thank you so much, Mayor Garcetti. I'd now like to bring in Council Member Nithya Rahman of LA's 4th Council District. Councilman Rahman, you've recently introduced legislation to the City Council, along with many of your colleagues, regarding hate and the city's response. How do you see policy and legislation playing a role in keeping communities safe? 
Well, thank you so much for your question, Capri, and thank you so much for having me on this panel. I'm excited to be here with everyone else um, in taking on this important issue. You know, I want to echo some of the mayor's comments. The attacks in Atlanta earlier this week were not an isolated event, sadly, and we're seeing the impacts of violence and hatred here in Los Angeles. And I want to be clear that we as community leaders, as elected representatives, the language that we use, the way we talk about these issues, the way we bring focus and attention on these issues, this matters. Hate speech from public officials, exactly as the mayor said, starting at the very top, have fueled an increase in hate in this country over the last four years. And we see that in the numbers that you talked about. And it is imperative that we lead with compassion and with unity. And I'm really excited to work with all of you to make LA into a place that leads with love. That's a place where people can really come together and show their support for one another and protect one another. I, you know, I think one of the things I also wanted to draw attention to you from this past week was how that incident was a glaring example of how people who experience multiple vulnerabilities end up being the greatest victims. You know, these were low wage workers, they were women, they were vulnerable in so many ways. And the work that the city can do on all of these fronts to protect workers in their workplaces, to make sure that women don't experience sexual harassment or other kinds of uh, workplace injustice, um, that people who are experiencing homelessness, who are primarily people of color, aren't, uh, are able to access services and to get what they need to reduce criminalization, to increase access to the things that people so desperately need. All of these things are able to actually move us towards a city that that's really anchored in love. This past week, uh, or two weeks ago, um, you know, I was really uh, excited that we were doing more on this issue um, than we have been. And uh, I wanted to talk about a couple of the things that the city council did. We passed a resolution asking for more support from state and federal legislators to make sure that we have the resources as a city to take on hate, to support efforts against it, and to make sure that we have the legislative protections that we needed to take action. I also wanted to highlight a motion um, that we put out about street harassment um, and taking on street harassment across all demographics because violence is the most extreme form of hate against uh, all kinds of communities. But street harassment is all pervasive um, and, and all kinds of people face it when they are moving around this great city. A lot of cities around the US have taken on street harassment in ways that don't just look at enforcement, that don't just look at using um, uh, law enforcement and, and reporting, but also do proactive campaigns. Um, things like uh, having messaging on public spaces in city owned transit systems that focuses on the importance of respect for one another and uh, talks about how you can respond to incidents that you witness. It provides bystander training for employees or for people who are just uh, using public transit or using public spaces. Um, provides methodologies for people when they witness things to try and intervene to de-escalate. All of these things are incredibly important and were talked about in this motion um, as things that the city could support. Uh, and I think really making sure that reporting incidents is simple, straightforward, um, it, it, it not, you know, so that we can really look at what we're doing on this issue and to see progress and to monitor that progress over time, I think is also incredibly important. We, we really can do a lot in the city and I'm hoping that we can do more. When you're out in your district, what are you hearing about uh, AAPI hate? You know, I read, um, I read some commentary earlier um, by a reporter, Josie Wong, and uh, you know, I wanted to share what she said. Uh, she is seeing exhaustion. Asian American women are exhausted. One told her that she was on even higher alert after Atlanta. She's constantly aware of her surroundings, knowing who's behind me, who's in front of me, paying attention to you know, which exits are closed. Women do this all the time anyway. I do this when I'm you know, traversing public spaces. Now it's worse. And I think we really need to create a community here in Los Angeles for people who feel vulnerable to come forward. And, and I think a major way that we can do that here in LA is to talk about how we can work better with our community partners as allies, to talk about how we can do programming in schools 
to address these issues before um, people become adults, when they're young people, when they're still thinking about uh, how they respond to other people in their own communities. I think these are the ways in which our city can really take on this issue um, in proactive ways, in, 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 in ways that address violence before it happens. And, and I'm very, very excited to work with everyone on this panel and my colleagues in the council to make sure that this happens. Thank you, council member. Now we have city attorney, Mike Fuhr, who's on the line. And as a former member of his team, I know that he's been very involved in this issue as well. City attorney Fuhr, the city attorney has a role in prosecuting hate crimes and you've been active in speaking out on this issue. Tell us a bit you, more. Capri. Tell us a bit more about the justice system and how it works, um, and particularly how we can support the victims of hate crimes and how you've been involved in serving vulnerable communities. Now, Capri, thank you very much, and thank you for your leadership. And also, I want to express gratitude to all my colleagues in public service who are joining with you today on this very important discussion. So I, I actually want to begin, Capri, just for a moment and speak very personally about these issues, because um, I think sometimes they can get a little abstract. Uh, I have to say, you know, in my own family situation, I remember I was in college away from home. My youngest brother was engaged in some work opposing white supremacists in my hometown, and a cross was burned on our front lawn. When my mom grew up in Boyle Heights, she remembers very vividly as she was teaching us about social justice when we were very small, what it felt like when suddenly all her Japanese American friends were gone like the next day uh, because they were interned by our government. Uh, we have, of course, recently experienced leadership in Washington that has marginalized and degraded people from a variety of minority groups. Um, from the minority to Latinos in our society um, and beyond. So we live in this tumultuous time, but you can draw a straight line between what's been happening before us to now. And as you talk about the particularly recent incidents targeting our neighbors in the Asian American communities of our city and of our nation, we know that this is not new, that the Chinese Exclusion Act all the way to the internment in World War II are examples of the fact that our nation must come to grips with the victimization and discrimination and bias that has pervaded American society, and we can and we have to do better. So in my office, we take hate crimes very seriously, and we are taking this moment in time when API community members are targeted as seriously as we ever have. Um, you know, Capri, that last year, early on in the pandemic, when President Trump and his administration were using terms like Kung flu and Chinese virus, that our office led a hate crime prevention forum designed to raise visibility of this issue, designed to discuss cultural and language barriers that might be impeding someone from reporting, but to make a very strong statement also that we are standing with members of our community who might be potential victims to emphasize the importance of reporting because no action we can take can happen without reporting and to assure that everyone knows that when appropriate, we're gonna prosecute and hold perpetrators accountable. So you ask, what is our office's role? Once there is a report made of uh, in a matter of hate uh, to LAPD, and I can't emphasize enough how important that initial report is, that report is referred to our office or to the district attorney's office. Our office prosecutes misdemeanors. The district attorney prosecutes felonies. Hate crimes can be either. Once a matter is referred to our office, it's analyzed, and if it is appropriate, we will take action on issues that relate to hate. We've taken it again and again during the course of my tenure as city attorney and before. Uh, the other piece I think that's really important is our office isn't merely involved in raising visibility of these issues and educating the community in prosecuting. We are also involved in assisting victims. And I'm happy to talk about that, Capri, if you would like. Uh, thank you, Mike. You can go forward and add additional points. 
Sure. No, I just wanted to say that we have a very robust victims assistance program in our office, and that pertains to all victims of crime. And so we're available for a broad swath of individuals who have been the victims of crime. But when it comes to hate crime, that's certainly true as well. And so we have people in our office who are very sensitive, not only to uh, trying to get people any, any restitution or other help that they need, but doing it in an incredibly sensitive and culturally sensitive way. And we know in the wake of the recent incidents that have been targeting uh, members of the API community, that there are concerns about language barriers, about a cultural reluctance to come forward, questions in the community about how people will be treated if they report a crime. Will they be re-victimized in the criminal justice system? And I wanna underscore as strongly as I can that in our office, we're gonna embrace you, we're going to listen to you, we're gonna believe you, we're gonna stand up for you and do everything we can to protect you throughout the process. Because as others have said, right now we know that in many communities, and right now in the Asian American communities of our nation, there are people reluctant to leave their houses, to be in public, to go shopping, to perform the daily routines of their lives that they're used to performing. Um, that can't be. All of us need to be embracing anyone who is being victimized or marginalized or discriminated against and make sure they know that we all stand together. And that's a key theme of my office's work in this very important area. Thanks, Capri. Thank you so much, City Attorney Mike Fuhr. We appreciate you and your leadership as we move justice forward in the city of Los Angeles. Thank Chief you. Gr Chief Gramala, let's turn to you. One of the key points of confusion is the difference between a hate crime and a hate incident. Can you explain the difference between a hate crime and a hate incident, as well as LAPD's role in responding? Yes, absolutely, Capri, and to everyone watching today, first of all, thank you for taking time from your busy schedules to be here with us for this critical conversation. But I must underscore as we look around this virtual Zoom room, how fortunate I feel to be part of this leadership team and a city that puts every single member of its community first, where diversity is an asset diversity is celebrated and not just in word, but in how we practice our daily lives. Um, I'd like to talk about the differences between a hate crime and a hate incident briefly, Capri, if I may. Uh, but the main theme of my little piece of this conversation is report, report, report. We heard Mayor Garcetti emphasize this. We heard our, our partner in these um, uh, investigations uh, City Attorney Mike Fuhr um, state the same thing, report. Now, a hate crime is any criminal act. It could be a robbery, it could be a battery, it could be assault or a vandalism, or an attempted criminal act against an individual, a public agency, or a private institution in which a person's or victim's actual or perceived race, nationality, religion, sexual orientation, disability, or gender is a reason or part of why that crime was committed. So that's a criminal act. But I must underscore now that even if a non-criminal act occurs, and that is what we refer to as a hate incident, this may be words, it may be epithets, it may be the posting in a public place of something that is discriminatory, biased in nature, again, against one of those six protected classes. It is absolutely critical that those hate incidents, even though they are non-criminal, must be reported. People must have the courage and bravery to report to their local division, their police departments, these incidents, because they help a department focus, track, and provide extra attention to areas to prevent those incidents from escalating into crimes of violence or reportable criminal acts. We often hear um, people in passing say, oh my goodness, I heard such and such uh, be the focus of horrific hate speech, um, a biased act, a lack of uh, providing of services at a particular establishment. 
those need to be reported. And the police department is here to partner with every single member of this community to ensure reporting occurs. We're also working hand in hand with a nonprofit organization, community groups and leaderships to strengthen the bonds of reporting, of encouraging people to not be fearful, get come out of the shadows and let us know what's going on in your neighborhoods, in your part of town and in your communities. Thank you. Also, Chief Gramala, we know that many people are reluctant to report hate crimes or hate incidents to the police. Um, can you just tell us how folks can report a hate crime or incident? And again, I know you touched on it just now, but what do you say again to those who may be reluctant to come forward? Thank you so much, Capri. And, and Mayor Garcetti did a great job of providing this information as well, but let me repeat it. First of all, um, I grew up in Los Angeles. Um, I live and breathe this city. Um, I am a public servant who puts public first. Our 9,700 officers are being uh, told that they must open their hearts and be the ambassadors to our community, which we know they are and we know that they can be. And we have to improve our outreach and our building of that trust each and every day with each and every contact. But if a crime in progress is occurring, as the mayor stated, please call 911. If it is not a crime in progress where a person's physical well being is at stake, please call 1 877 ASK LAPD. But also, there is a rich resource directory available on lapdonline.org in a variety of languages. Uh, not only those of AAPI community members, but of our rich, diverse community in Los Angeles. And there is a way to translate hate crime uh, information and hate incident reporting information in a multitude of languages. And that can happen directly online as you enter your language. Uh, so whatever your preference is, whatever your comfort level is, we should have that availability for you there. I please encourage you to reach out to those resources. We are here for you. We embrace you and we encourage you to trust us to take these incidents and, and uh, investigate them to the absolute possible uh, ability of us and the city attorney and district attorney's office. We're here for you. Thank you, Chief Gramala. As noted, LAPD is not the only resource for reporting hate crimes or hate incidents. With me now is Manju Kakarne, co-founder of Stop AAPI Hate, which formed in 2020 to track and prevent hate incidents against Asian and Pacific Islanders across the country. Manju, Stop, hate, Stop AAPI Hate has recorded thousands of hate crimes and hate incidents against the AAPI community recently. What is the data telling you now? Well, first off, Capri, I just want to thank you and the Civil and Human Rights and um, Equity Office of Los Angeles, along with Mayor Garcetti, City Attorney Fuhrer, uh, Council Member Rumman, and Chief Gramala. Um, it's just such an honor um, to be with you all today and really want to express my appreciation for the work that all of you are doing to help AAI, AAPI communities in this moment. It's so important and what we've seen, um, and I appreciate the mayor uh, mentioning this at the outset, we have received 3,800 incident reports from across 50 states in the District of Columbia. This is extremely upsetting um, and they range the gamut between um, verbal harassment to discrimination in the workplace and public accommodations to unfortunately physical attacks um, as serious as the one, uh, one that took place in Atlanta on Tuesday. Um, so our sympathies go out to the families and the community in Atlanta. Um, and we know though that here in Los Angeles, we too have experienced hate. Um, there are 360 incidents that have been reported to stop API hate since we launched exactly one year ago. So on March 19th of 2020, we set up our site and we began very quickly to receive incident reports from across the country. 
With that information, we are uh, providing the data and analysis to policymakers, to the public, so we can really better understand what's happening across our country so we can address it. And it's with partners like the ones we have today that we can begin to do that. Thank you. And what should the community know about Stop AAPI Hate and the services you provide specifically? Stop API Hate is a collaborative of three organizations in California. APCON, which is my organization, the Asian Pacific Policy and Planning Council. We're a coalition of over 40 community-based organizations that together serve and represent the 1.5 million AAPIs in Los Angeles County. Our uh, collaborative partners, Chinese for Affirmative Action and San Francisco State University um, do similar work in the Bay Area. And we came together last year because we saw that emergence of hate against our communities. Sadly, here in Los Angeles, it started even before we had our first case of COVID-19, where a child was physically attacked and verbally assaulted on the schoolyard. He was accused of having COVID simply because he was Asian American. And so we sought to uh, document what was happening against our fellow Asian Americans, and again, begin to do this work. So what I want people to know is, your identifying information is kept confidential and not released without your explicit permission. Our form is available not only in English, but in 12 Asian American languages. And that we are working um, to provide direct assistance to our community members, along with resources that are available on our website. Um, in addition to serving as a national reporting center, I'm very proud to say we are part of LA Versus Hate, which is an innovative program to accept um, reports of hate incidents here in Los Angeles County through 211. Individuals can call 211 or they can report online and they will receive direct case management services from um, individuals aligned with 211 and that information is shared with organizations like mine so we can provide direct assistance um, along with organizations like um, uh, ADL, Chirla, the Brotherhood Crusade, and others that are working in other parts of our community of Los Angeles. Uh, we're providing direct support and we're working with our partners um, in the city as well as in the county to help each and every person who's experienced hate and begin to also look at policy solutions so that we don't have to deal with this moving into uh, the end of this year in 2022. Thank you, Manju. I really appreciate your support. Um, and we thank all of our city and community leaders here in Los Angeles. If we want to protect our diverse and vibrant city, stopping hate in Los Angeles must be a priority. However, discrimination against the API community and many others goes far beyond hate crimes and hate incidents. Discrimination in commerce, education, employment and housing continues to harm our city and it must be met with thorough investigations and penalties. That is what the Los Angeles Civil Human Rights and Equity Department is here to do. Later this spring, we'll be, we will be launching our discrimination enforcement program, the first of its kind for our city. The department will investigate discrimination in the private sector as it relates to commerce, education, employment, and housing, and provide justice for victims. This will be done as a free public service. We are honored to be launching this important program and to be working with our city leaders to ensure its success. Because when Los Angeles is free from hate and discrimination, we all can thrive. For more information about reporting hate crimes and hate incidents, as well as a list of city, county, and community resources, please visit our website, civilandhumanrights.lacity.org slash stop hate. Whether you are a victim, a witness, or a concerned ally, there is something that we all can do to reduce hate in our city. This is Capri Maddox signing off. 
and thanking you for helping to make Los Angeles a city of angels.